Okay, I have got a uh, new computer and I have got a new computer and uh, I'm going to try to record my first podcast on the new computer. The lighting is not very good. Uh, professionals probably wouldn't like this, but I hope you can focus on the uh, course content and uh, the aesthetics, right? So, uh, with various estimates of the volume of water that sinks in the North Atlantic, uh, the uh, deep water formation forms about 14 square drips or 1.4 times 10 to the 7 meter cube per second. And the area of the Atlantic is 10 to the 14 meter squared and the depth of the uh, region of deep water flow that is being um, uh, seeing the surface before uh, uh, sinking is about three kilometers. So if you divide the ocean volume by the volume flux, you get a time scale uh, for filling this region of about 700 years. You can use age tracers and we will see what the tracers are uh, and get similar numbers. So this is a very good back of the envelope uh, calculation. And we can uh, think about uh, the exchange uh, between the wind forced layer and the interior of the ocean where we have uh, uh, Ekman pumping or Ekman suction of the order of uh, uh, tens of meter per uh, uh, per year, uh, except in the Southern Ocean where you get order 100 uh, meters per year. Okay, we will compare that to, uh, for example, the sinking rates uh, near the surface versus the sinking rate of the uh, deep water. So the uh, water that sinks is then flowing meridionally. So you can estimate the meridional velocities as well using that volume flux of 14 square drops uh, and measure uh, against the depth of three kilometers and the width of the Atlantic, which is of the order of 5,000 uh, kilometers. And you get a number of 10 to the minus three meter per second as an order of magnitude estimate, which is what we have been saying that the deep water uh, circulation is generally so weak. And this is actually faster because of the uh, sinking uh, deep water uh, uh, flowing out. Um, then the uh, compensating vertical uh, flux required to replace the sinking water. Every parcel of water that sinks has to be replaced by uh, the um, another parcel of water for continuity. So you can take the volume flux and divide by the area of the ocean and you get order four meters per year. Um, we will connect that these numbers to the heat transport that would be uh, involved in the thermohaline circulation. So we have to look at the surface heat flux. Obviously there is latent and sensible and long wave. This is short solar and long wave or short wave and long wave, latent and sensible. Uh, we've talked about the buoyancy loss uh, and so on. Uh, but it also has to be related to the meridional heat transport because whatever the ocean receives from the surface, uh, if it is if the ocean is to be uh, in equilibrium on some time scale, then the uh, meridional transports by the ocean have to match uh, the temperature distribution and the net surface heat flux, right? How do we do then a uh, dynamic model of thermohaline circulation? We can go back to our uh, surface uh, model that we had developed where we looked at the Ekman pumping or Ekman suction and we imagined a Taylor column uh, of depth, depth D, for example, if you remember, and we said to compensate for the mass flux coming in or the mass flux going out and the required stretching or compression of the Taylor column to maintain its length parallel to the axis of rotation. Uh, we had imagined <clears throat> a thin shell on the sphere and we had looked at the Taylor columns moving parallel to the axis of rotation and we had derived interior geostrophic transports, the meridional movement, uh, geostrophic currents, velocities needed 
to uh, compensate for the uh, Ekman pumping was this relation, beta Vg equals F over uh, times dW dz. Uh, you can go back to that podcast and look it up. What do we want to do with it? Obviously, we want to integrate it from the bottom to the mid-depth where the deep water uh, circulation is being, uh, com the deep water formation and the southward flow is being compensated by the general upwelling. And we want to uh, know that the upwelling is positive. So if you integrate this with W equal to zero at the bottom because uh, water cannot come out of the uh, bottom boundary, uh, then the mid-depth upwelling, which is uh, in the upward direction, is positive. So the integrated uh, meridional transport has to be positive as well. Essentially, it means the sinking water is compensated by northward movement in the interior uh, as an integrated transport from the bottom to the mid-depth. Okay, that's uh, kind of what we had been looking at, looking at the thermocline structure with the upwelling uh, doming and the uh, convergence and uh, pushing by the subtropical gyres down. And we had deep water formation with buoyancy losses uh, in uh, both high latitudes. And we imagine that this sinking is being compensated by this broad large scale upwelling. So now we are trying to estimate the upwelling in the North Atlantic uh, with this model. So this is how it would look. Uh, the sinking is happening here. Let's say this is in the Gin Seas, uh, which is way on the eastern side of the North Atlantic. The water would flow west to the western boundary, go south, and then it has to return to compensate for uh, the outflow from this uh, western boundary current. We haven't explained why there is a western boundary intensification of the deep uh, circulation as well. We just said that uh, this was uh, what Henry Stommel had uh, guessed based on his own discovery of the beta effect at the surface, wind-driven circulation, and the western boundary currents like the Gulf Stream and the Kuro Shield. So we will see why this uh, western boundary intensification happens uh, with the deep water, uh, deep uh, water flow as well. And of course that also has to do with the beta effect again. And this is the interior medial transport that we just uh, talked about. This is very similar to the um, way we imagined the uh, depth of the Taylor column changes as the Taylor columns move uh, south or north. So you move towards the equator the uh, height of the Taylor column increases, and if you move towards the uh, poles, the height gets squeezed. If you remember the cartoon, we'll look at it again. So if you had Ekman pumping to compensate for the mass being acquired and the stretching needed, the Taylor column would move towards the equator, and uh, in the subpolar gyres where you have Ekman section, uh, the uh, Taylor column would have to move north to make up for the loss of mass and the shrinking of the Taylor column. The same exact thing is uh, happening in the, uh, the uh, mid-depth to bottom uh, flow as well, as we will see. This is the, the schematic driven by Henry Stommel back in 1958 after he had already explained the, the western boundary currents uh, uh, in terms of the beta effect. And without any data uh, and uh, following our arguments that the deep water flows are so weak that they cannot be measured directly, he actually predicted that there must be very strong western boundary currents that can be directly, directly observed. And surely enough, after a few years, there was a western boundary current measured uh, off of uh, Massachusetts uh, Cape Cod uh, region. Okay, so here's the sinking in the North Atlantic, uh, flowing southward along the western boundary across the equator with compensating northward flow in the northern hemisphere and southward flow in the southern hemisphere, meeting the southern hemisphere south southern ocean circulation with Weddell Sea deep water formation mixing with these waters and those waters inundating the, Atlantic, the Pacific Ocean with 
northward, westward, uh, western boundary transport all the way, compensating uh, northward flow in the gyres and southward flow in the southern hemisphere uh, in the deep ocean. This is all abyssal circulation. Similarly, Indian Ocean gets the uh, deep water and bottom water coming in. It is closed off to the north at relatively lower latitudes and that water also gets converted to surface water and has to flow back up. This was a schematic, remarkably insightful, not completely accurate, but nonetheless basically captured the uh, basic ideas of western boundary intensification and the northward flow required uh, towards the sinking uh, water. Okay, so we will explain this further in the next podcast and we will look up more about Henry Stommel, who was actually a giant in the field of oceanography and did amazing, amazing things, many, many, many things, uh, as we will uh, talk about in a little bit more uh, in the next podcast. Okay, so hopefully the new uh, uh, laptop has uh, created a very clean uh, sound and the podcast, despite this lighting issue I may be having, uh, which I'm sure you can tolerate.